smooth. I don't have to go through different screens and yeah, it's great. And I just get my light table, get my tracing paper, hook up my my old school tattoo machine. It makes a loud note. Like everybody in the in the in the tattoo shop is tattooing with these quiet ass rotaries, you know. And then my old school ass breaks out. Let's go. <laughs> I don't have to go through different screens and. Yeah, it's great. And I just get my light table, get my tracing paper, hook up my, my old school tattoo machine. It makes a loud note. Like everybody in the, in the in the tattoo shop is tattooing with these quiet ass rotaries, you know, and then my old school ass breaks out. Let's go. Screens and yeah, it's great. And I just get my light. That was me. I am so sorry. Okay. All um, right. Am I having a stroke? I was so confused. I'm like, why are we listening to that again? I thought I was having I've a been cloned. <laughs> well, I, I just, I was able to get the YouTube going. So we're live awesome. on YouTube, everybody. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it. Um, yeah, whatever was going on before, uh, uh, never mind, uh, never mind the technical difficulties. Uh, Hello, YouTube. Yeah. We're, yeah. Hey, YouTube. Um, yeah, well, so sorry that we're late, right? So it, it turns out that uh, everybody, it turns out everybody was on time and I was, I was the one late for class. <laughs> um, well, uh, so I already did the, already did the intro. And so I, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I'm not doing it again, but we will say, you know, um, this is reinventing, Guy Edgerson's reinventing the tattoo community. Uh, so welcome everybody. We want to thank our sponsors, Tattoo Now. Uh, check out Tattoo Now. That's for Gabe. Um, and of course, thank you to Guy Etchison for being the founder and the uh, inspiration behind this uh, behind this community. So, um, anyway, this is uh, Drawing for Tattooers. Uh, it's it's Memorial Day 23, and so um, anyway, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so we're having some technical difficulties, <laughs> of course. Happy this Monday. Morning. Yeah, happy Monday. Um, and uh, uh, we we were uh, we were discussing a topic, and so I think I'd like to just jump right back into it. I'd, I'd like to jump right back into it, get through that, and then open up the conversation because you know I know it's uh, your time is money, and so I'm so excited that you all are you know were able to join us today. So. Let me uh, let me try this. Well, let me try this again. Uh, hold on. I really like this topic too because this is. I, I just I like seeing these really simple examples because sometimes I wonder. I'm like, how are they making these edges? Mm. You know, um, different. Yeah. Especially at so like, because like you know like especially when they do like like let's let's say like a realistic rose right like a super soft realistic rose no line, and I'm just like how are you all doing this? You know, how do you put this super light pedal on top of this other one? And, you know, the differentiation between the two is just so subtle, but it's beautiful, you know? So this is great. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And I think um, I really couldn't agree with you more because to be honest, like I, I it's still very uh, vexing. You know what I mean? It's, it's this, it's probably, it's, you know, when we get down to it, it's like the simplest thing. And then you, you know, you, you get into the rhythm of doing it and then this magic will happen. But mm -hmm. once it's all woven together, you know what I mean? It's like, how did you, how did you, how did that happen? Yeah. You know, how did, how did, how did that all come together and then start this, uh, this sort of this magic trick that's really, you know, so, so wonderful. So anyway, this is this is some of the you know this is some of the approaches that we can all take, and it can help us as we're navigating because it can, again, it's like things that are complicated that we want to do. It's it's too, it's too much just to sort of you know, just to have it right. It it's a process, and so this is um, again mm -hmm. something that like we were talking about earlier. Uh, we're talking about earlier how like sometimes we do, we really talk about simple ideas on this show but getting a chance to review them might really like lead to new insights that you you know that you otherwise like wouldn't have like through conversation oh, yeah. through like looking at stuff i think um at least for me that's how i feel you know like i all the things that that we do end up talking about like 
I don't, you know what I mean? Like they're always, there's always something new to learn. All right. And so, um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get back into, we'll get back to where I'm going to start over. So, <laughs> but we, you know, for, you know, at least we weren't like, uh, you know, work, work for me. Yeah. 10 pages deep. All right. So this is, uh, this is a, this is from a, a short chapter in a book called First Lessons in, in Painting by Jack Ham. So if you're interested, you know, please uh, check out that book. Um, a lot of really, you know, uh, fundamental ideas. But of course, uh, um, you know, it's as long as you're sort of like, you know, you're studying these things, I think they're, they, can, they can sort of operate in the background sometimes, right? Especially when you're trying to do, you know, again, like render the rose or like, you know, some other really, you know, uh, some really, really important project to you. You can really focus on being in the moment and being present and doing your thing. And then, you know, this stuff helps you out. So, all right, edge differentiation. All right, so we'll zoom in. Oh, let, quickly, let me, let me sort of point out, uh, you know, all of the illustrations on the side here on the left-hand side. And so, these will become useful and as we're reading through you know if you if anybody wants to see any of them or ask any questions or something feel free um, but again uh, I really like to link this back to the reinventing curriculum so the idea of pause neg relationships positive negative um, so let's let's get into some of this reading all right of what value are these two pages before us going to be two pages. <laughs> so, um, how do they relate to our still life study? Actually, the exercises presented relate to all of art. So they are of more than passing worth. Uh, they may be used only for referral purposes. Okay. So this page deals with flats or two dimensions, uh, height and breadth, um, without depth or thickness, right? So height and width. Um, uh, the opposite page, the next one we're going to see, uh, deals with the extra dimension of depth. Uh, in all instances, the problem becomes one of edge differentiation. Uh, this problem must be met head on by the artist uh, in all compositions. Right? So, this is something you know that Jake Meeks of the Fireside Network talks about quite a bit this sort of you know edges over lines sort of concept. Um, it's kind of like you know the idea being that like a line is an edge. Right, all we end up really kind of having are these sorts of uh, uh, all we end up having really are these edges, and there are there are various sorts of you know sharpness or you know or softness. So, um, right. So, uh, so to continue, first he or she, the artist, outlines uh, their subject or treats it uh, linearly. Uh, that is with lines. And so again, I, you know, something that we were talking about earlier is like, you know, you can, can always sort of sketch with lines. It's something that's very sort of intuitive. But as you paint, as you, uh, as you, you know, work digitally, sometimes, you know, you can always start to think about painting or, you know, or drawing with shapes. And I think almost, you know, if you start your tattoo, for instance, with a mag, rather than a liner, let's say, hypothetically, uh, you you are sort of you know you are sort of you could be thinking about it uh, in terms of shape, right? But um, uh, but anyway, uh, you could you could start with a line, right? But again, there's going to be this uh, this this issue of edge, right? So, okay, he or she may stop there with lines, but usually a dark and light pattern is desired, whether or not it is to be in color. It uh, would be a bland exhibit if uh, the art was all with line and without values or coloration. So, um, you know, essentially what, what we're talking about, like, is, you know, having some sort of tonal scheme is going to make for a lot more interest. Um, lines are beautiful too. So, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to totally discount them and say that it's, you know, that, that like it has to have all this rendering, but I think, Perhaps like, you know, if you have enough lines, it starts to kind of almost have a, a tonality to it, if that makes sense. Um, mm. So if, just, if it's just sort of basic lines, I mean, again, that could, again, that's probably true. It could be very bland, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just for the concept of it, we're talking about, you know, having, uh, 
having some sort of contrast. Contrast means difference, right? That's what contrast is all about. Um, right. So next, the artist asks themselves, how, uh, how are they going to distinguish one area from another? Simple as it may seem, the simple as it is, really, uh, the way it is done may make or break composition. So just sort of differentiating between one sort of shape to another. Um, how do we do it? What's the, you know, what's the, uh, what's the key here? Um, so figure two, right? So we'll sort of, you know, we'll focus up here on the, on this second set of uh, quadrangles, right? Um, so finds the planes assuming a greater importance uh, by a feathered support dark uh, at the outer edges. The front plane is lifted off uh, from the second uh, by the same method. Um, so the illusion of space is what is provided. Right, so what do we see here in this first, uh, you know, so there's number one, it's just the outlines, and then number two, there's some rendering going on. Uh, edge differentiation, right? The edge, the object, these, the square, this rectangle, separated from the background. And then again, they're separated from each other by a bit of, a bit of tone. I would, you know, it's a little, it's, they're pretty close in value, right? But I would almost say like, like the, the, you know, some of the render here, at, you know, where the interface, where this, this square is sort of on top of this rectangle, I think it's a little, I would argue it's a little bit lighter. This is, this is something where I, you know, I think uh, we will see, we'll see more of that as we go on, but this is something that Guy Atchison talks about quite a bit, and that is this sort of idea of, uh, you know, adding contrast to your, you know, to your planes, right? So in the Let's say in the background you have these dark darks, right? In the foreground, we don't use the same value, right? Like having all the same value kind of flattens things out. But, um, but we're just we're just beginning, right? We're just sort of just differentiating these edges. And so I think that's um, that's you know it's a good place to start, right? Uh, so um, figure three, uh, figure three has. Um, has graduated values on the planes uh, uh, met by contrasting values of either plane themselves or under the planes. Observe the dark and light scheme. Right. So this is exactly what uh, this is exactly what we were um, just sort of referring to, and that is uh, you know we've got this sort of differentiation. There's a there's a light edge here, right, and you know at the the lower right hand corner of the square. So it's a it's a a pause on neg, so positive referring to darkness, and then negative referring to lightness. So we have this pause on neg relationship here, and then to the, the left edge of of the square we have neg on pause, right? So it's radiation graduated. It's sort of you know uh, we're able to sort of transition, right? Sort of dynamically from pause on neg to neg on pause, and then again in the background we have the same sort of thing. Um, I would argue too. There, you know, we're kind of we're seeing a little bit more sort of a, a darker value in the background of this of this one. Uh, right. So um, moving on, Figure Four has an oval shape running through it, under and around the planes. Sorry about that. Um, and this sort of thing is good for still life abstractions. Um, figure Four. Uh, there it is. You can see like this sort of tone shape is like there's like an ellipse there's like an oval sort of shape to it um and again we've got this darkest deepest sort of value and it's really separating these two objects from the background and then lighter value on the you know on the foreground object separates it from the one immediately behind it but it's if, if the value on this you know this square in the front in figure number four was the same as the as the dark in the background right? it would flatten out right you would lose that you would lose this sort of edge differentiation that we've been talking about so just treating each one as specific um it helps uh it helps to you know create this illusion right that we're starting to 
be able to decipher this from that. Right, so. Figure five, move right along. Figure five carries an interior border uh, treatment that could be widened or narrowed. These borders could be uh, differing widths. Um, right. So, you know, in this one, again, I think, you know, we have, there's a principle of continuation, right, that we would sort of, we would almost sort of see, and all of these sort of have that, that idea, but behind, you know, this, this square, the rectangle is, you know, the, that frame is, you know, is continuing to run. But again, they are, uh, they're separated from the background. Why? Because they have, you know, uh, they have a little bit of value that's, you know, that gives them that dimension, that, that edge differentiation. Outlines are a shorthand for this, right? Like, so if we outline something, you know, we are defining the, the edge, right? So any, any sort of bold calligraphic graphic, you know, perimeter outline that you put on a, you know, on a design, you're differentiating the edge. Um, and then the, you know, the thickness of it, that's, Again, it's going to add to it being more distinct or not. So, uh, right, so figure six uh, has an interior border. Uh, where are we at? Figure six? Yeah, figure six has an exterior border treating uh, floating value inside the area. Um, we can see that, obviously. Again, it's sort of like, you know, I, I think... I would like to see, you know, if we if I zoom in a bit, I'd like to see like some of this value here right up. You, know, you could bring that up to that edge and make it a bit stronger. Does that make sense? Right. Mm. Like, yeah. Some of this this value here. Right now, it's sort of like it's just the line, but you know, it's. But there we go. I think we're starting to we're starting to think in this way. We're starting to mm. think about edge differentiations and stuff. Right. So seven really neat yeah so uh i like this one seven yeah, has acquired a diagonal that. layers of value behind it uh on the top and on the top of the rectangles yeah kind of really kind of interesting um you know again so we have this pause on neg relationship right and then it's dynamically moving to the you know to the backside neg negative on positive i that's uh that really feels like space it doesn't feel deep it kind of almost feels like a like a like a you know like a table surface or you know like you know, almost sort of like you know like we have what we have right now you know there's a there's some plane and it's it's you know photograph or your I don't know even you know uh, even your canvas or something and it's like next to the wall I, we see this I think you know often but but there it is sort of simply applied and it's just really about the edges and so. Um, number eight, right, uh, has jagged vertical streaks uh, on on and behind the planes. This one's a little weird to me. <laughs> this one's weird. I don't know. Um, but uh, but again, it's you know, there's the principle sort of still stands. We can we you know can really see it. But yeah, we've got this negative on negative right here in the middle. Same thing with this negative on negative. It's not as strong. You know what I mean? It's there's not as much nuance that you could otherwise have, I think. Um, now, let's say that they were very connected. You know what I mean? That's the impression that I think that you give, you know, as far as like something that they're like touching versus like there's some space or distance, you know what I mean? Behind it, uh, between these two sorts of planes, right? Because we're just talking about two dimensions in this, at this point, but um, right. So figure nine, simply two planes uh, and their values are different. Again, they are, uh, there's a darker one and then there's a, you know, sort of middle, middle tone. And so they're, they're both sort of positive on a negative against a negative value. And then between each other, you know, they are, uh, they have a differentiation. And then uh, on number 10, we have some, you know, some, that's gradating, right? Uh, Author uses the word graduating values, but I'm just saying gradation that's happening. And so we're able to get, so again, positive on negative, but also, you know, there's a there's this more nuanced sort of differentiation between this lighter or middle middle toned edge of the foreground shape 
and it's distinct from uh, from the, the one that's behind it. All right, so we got these weird looking cube things, but <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's what I, <laughs> it gets, you know it's the it's the it's the concept, right? And so again, this is this may seem very simple. This all this two dimensional stuff, and but when we start talking about it in three dimensions, it's like there's an extra, you know what I mean? That extra one adds so much more complexity, especially when we think about like, you know, add space, maybe there's a surface underneath it, you know, um, or again, you know, as a, just as rendering it as an object itself, right? Even without background, I think in our tattoos, you know, we probably encounter that all the time, right? We're just it's not time to do background or, uh, you know, or maybe you're going to do it later or something like that. Uh, you know, how do you how do you navigate you know some of some of these issues right so again let's uh we can take a step back from the examples so you can see all of the you know all of these various sorts of um, applications of edge differentiation so let's get into the reading right uh front top and side planes on this page we'll deal with the extra dimension of depth on the preceding page, we had um, only two planes, and although these could be separated spatially and thought uh, that they could be treated with value uh, gradations, they still need uh, their two-dimensional state. Uh, most still life subjects possess the side planes uh, and the top planes. Um, in the case of rounded objects, they are turning surfaces to consider, right? So just rendering, you know, like a sphere, a lot of, a lot of things have a lot of things have rounded surfaces, you know, like my coffee cup. Um, and so, again, it still has all this dimension. But, um, you know, uh, thinking about just really kind of keeping in mind this simple relationship of uh, positive and negative or differentiating an edge uh, just gives it so much more sort of information for us to, you know, grab hold of. Um, right. In each of these instances, we have uh, three exposed surfaces, uh, two uh, uneven quadrilat quadrilateral forms. They could be called lopsided cubes or irregular boxes. These shapes are more interesting than two perfect cubes uh, with monotonous parallelism. Um, this is why many still life painters interpret what they see uh, in many other ways than with mathematical accuracies. You know, I get, you know, that's. Uh, uh, subjective <laughs> you know whatever you're into but again i think like um, extreme mathematical precision you know it's it's it, it, it's not necessary in art all the time you know it might be might be more necessary in architecture uh you know what i mean but um it's it's likely you know it's all it's all illusory anyway in terms of you know we're trying to if we depict three dimensions and two dimensions it's all you know it's always going to be this illusion anyway so um so yeah so eyeballing it and, you know uh, but understanding it to a certain degree i think is helpful when you when it comes time to eyeball it right so all right so uh the total of six planes so we can see like you know each one of these objects has three so there's six total planes is what we're talking about um uh, and each of these examples is fascinating in their variation, right? So figure two, so check out figure two, um, is backed up by feathered value through the two forms uh, then remaining in outline. Right, so again, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's fairly minimal. There's just the simple, like, these objects, figure two, there's just a little bit of differentiation of edge between them and the background. There isn't any other tone sort of describing these, uh, so, you know, it's kind of like there, we can see the, you know, it's, it's, weak, in terms of, like, it's weak in terms of like how, uh, um, how they're, you know, they're separated from each other. But I mean, you know, if there was a little subtle sort of gradation of, of value in there, I think that could, that could certainly make it much more interesting. They could be glowing cubes or something like that, or they could be, let's say like dice on a, you know, uh, on a table or something like that, whatever it is that you're going for. Um, maybe this is the first step sort of differentiating like this much darker background value 
and then you know doing subtle things in the you know in these objects. Uh, figure three, darks on the opposite side, left and right. Um, uh, these planes are treated similarly. However, the front planes are different. Um, you know, this one is a, it's a little bit strange, I think, but at the same time, we're just getting this rhythm, right? This rhythm of darks and lights, and, it, and so it, they're differentiated and they're interesting, um, more so than more so than these ones that are, um, uh, you know, that don't have any sort of thing going on. So, um, right, Figure Four. Figure four has one plane of even value, right? So again, we're sort of gradating things. We can, I think you can sort of notice there's a little bit of lightness at this edge, you know, behind. So that gives us just that little touch of differentiation. Um, uh, so I think, you know, we can, we could imagine like a background in this case, uh, we could, we could see, you know, something that's very dark you know, that sort of transitions over to, you know, perhaps like medium dark, you know, sort of dynamic sort of positive negative relationship in the, in the background. Um, but again, I think something that's a, that's a useful principle is sort of thinking about uh, keeping the darks um, uh, organized, like you know, keeping very dark values organized. So in the background, maybe you use like your darkest you know, your darkest values or deepest values. Um, in the foreground, you, you know, you sort of, you may have the high, the highest amount of, you know, contrast. Maybe there's some, there, there's some like highlights and some really sort of fine, small sort of areas of, of really sharp, sharp value. Um, but not in both, right? You don't, you're not putting the same values in both of these places. And in that way, uh, you end up, um, uh, uh, you end up sort of having this differentiation of, of space. So, where were we? Uh, figure five, right? Uh, when the change of plane in figure five, all the edges are met with dark or light, and the two front planes are dark overall. Um, so again, I think we're we're kind of seeing, you know, there's some light that's happening here, but there's Again, there's a sort of differentiation of uh, of this edge, especially I think is is very uh, important um, on the the, the cube that's sort of behind number six, right? The two top planes are dark instead of the two front planes, as in five, and the surrounding faces uh, change from dark to light about midway. Again, it's you know sort of simple kind of idea. Um, maybe it's not as naturalistic as you might sort of see. But uh, there's um, there's clearly sort of distinct edges that are that are very useful here. Number seven, right? Let's see seven, eight, and nine. Isolate isolate the dark insides um, so that they are by themselves. Notice the interesting pattern. Form can be defined, and flat areas will turn into position even though they are identically valued, uh, provided they are handled in the right manner. So again. This could be sort of a graphic treatment. This could be something that's, you know what I mean, just sort of gives us, uh, um, you know, gives us something that's sort of like, uh, could be more subtle, right? It could be very subtle. And, um, you know, you could imagine sort of pushing those into the background and then maybe like, maybe you add a little bit of value onto this, you know, this lighter plane. And then they're just, you know, they could become almost lost. But again, you have, you're keeping this edge differentiation in mind. When we look at 10, right, every, you know, there's this, the almost the most amount of contrast, uh, right? Everything is gradated from the starkest value to the lightest one. And so we're really getting, um, you know, really getting a lot of uh, contrast and we're getting, you know, get definite edge differentiation. So, and I think, I think that's, I think that's good. There's more, uh, there's more to it, but of course, I think um, uh, I wanted to start with this basic concept. I really wanted to start with, you know, just sort of thinking about, we find an edge, we want to differentiate it from other things. Um, but again, bringing it back to this idea of positive on negative, that's going to help so much, especially when you're, if you have a reference, look for that relationship 
what's darkest, what's lightest, you may have to sort of take a step back and see the, you know, see the overall pattern. You know what I mean? So that way you can calibrate things so, you know, so you don't end up putting something, you know, making something way too dark or something uh, that, that spoils the relationship. But when it comes down to it, that's essentially what we're doing. We're, we're differentiating edges. We're having a positive on negative or negative on positive relationship. And um, so, yeah, that was, uh, that was the, um, the very basic concept that I wanted to talk about today. And um, so I hope that was, hope that was interesting and hope that was, that was useful for everybody. Um, let's open up the floor. Any questions or, you know, if there's any, other sorts of work that you really wanted to, that you really wanted to see. Um, so on the, the first like one through 10, um, like number five, is that basically like the same kind of thing you would use with like line widths for like new school pieces or for like biomech to where like the closer you want it, the thicker the outline and the farther back you want the thing to center the line work? Let's, Let's check it out so that way I can um, we'll have this visual. All right, so number five, you meant on the on the the first the example yeah. yeah. yeah, let's check it out. So here's number five. Yeah, so check uh, so um, talk again about what you were thinking. the you were saying new school and stuff. Yeah, like how like the it reminds me of a lot of like the line widths, um, how like the closer you want something, the thicker uh, the, the line work. Um, and then the farther back the thing is, the thinner the line work goes and to where it's kind of like a atmospheric perspective type of thing, but just with line width. Is that kind of like the same thing? I think, I, I, I love that. You know what I mean? I think that's, you know, it's a really great way to, you know, uh, sort of tie in something that's, you know, that we, you know, that we deal with and then sort of this, this idea, I, because I, you know, I really feel like, um, you know, a line is, is essentially an edge, right? It, mm -hmm. I mean, there is, you know, uh, in fact, the way that we can, I think it take that further is sort of thinking about that the line has itself has two edges, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a, maybe a, <clears throat> There's a leading edge or, you know, an edge on the perimeter. And then there's another one, right? It's the one that's sort of facing the or, or imminent internal to the, the structure that it's like sort of defining. Um, and so I think that that makes total sense. A lot of times I've seen that, I've seen artists use that, uh, uh, that technique of like build up bolder lines and that really sort of accentuates things brings them closer to the viewer because mm -hmm. that's really what we're you know we're still talking about that it, there is still like this it's you know it's what's absent from our conversation is perspective you know what i mean like it, it it's always there's always perspective because it's always about like a viewer's point of view any image you know that we see it's all about like seeing it a viewer seeing it from a particular point so again, we want to we want to bring something closer to that you know that the eye of the viewer. Um, again, like its position, like it's in you know like we're la these are layered on top of each other. Um, they could we could turn it upside down, you know what I mean? But still, because of their layering, it's it's sort of obvious like this is in front of that. But then you know I think what you're saying, Kyle, about like having bolder lines is another way to express. And sort of reinforce that idea. This is closer, closer to the viewer's, you know, point of view, if you will. Um, so yeah, no, I think that's I think that's really you know, um, that's a good way to sort of I think think about like uh, uh, how to how to apply what we're what we're talking about. There's an edge around a you know. An object, I guess that you know, like new school or even Art Nouveau. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, you know, think about Mooka's work or someone you know similar, and 
-hmm. There's these really there's these bold, really sorry. <laughs> there's these very bold, uh, chunky outlines around things, and that helps um, again define them, de define the object, bring it closer, emphasize it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, because sometimes you know, uh, again we're like looking at this at this at these two and number five still. Uh, the one behind also has this very bold line, you know, this thicker edge, so to speak. Um, and so if there were, you know, other squares and stuff that were further in the background and they had thinner lines, um, you know, these ones are closer, but they're also more emphasized, I think. Um, mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, I... So, but I love your, I love the relationship that you were building there. I think that's, um, I think that's just, uh, um, that's exactly what we need to do. And so Spirit was talking about roses and stuff earlier today. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think this is, I, I really believe that this is in large part, this is what you're looking at when you're, when you're seeing, especially beautifully rendered roses, but even if you're looking at a, at a photographic image of a rose, that's the way that you're able to distinguish the petal, you know, from the bloom of it, you know what I mean? From its, like, it's, it's sort of center bud or whatever. Or of course, like, you know, the edge of the, you know, the edge of the flower itself from the leaf, the background, this sort of thing. There's some relationship to, you know, edge differentiation that provides the contrast and helps us understand it. it un we can understand it as a form. We can understand it in terms of like the space between our eyeball and the thing. And then of course, like maybe something that lies beyond it. Um, but again, I think it's this, the shorthand is the, is the outline, right? Instead of, you know, instead of like carefully calibrating, you know, the edge, uh, you know, to the background, oftentimes in graphic arts and illustrative arts and tattooing, we use, uh, we use the outline to do this work. Um, and so, uh, it depends on the, the, the final look that you're going to go for depends on the, you know, the amount of the, the amount, right. Of, of rendering that's going to happen, you know, Sometimes the outline is the best you can do, right? But I think if you go back, if you go back and look at your own work, because you know, I certainly, I certainly do with this. I look and I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, yep, I just used a line there. I didn't render that edge. You know what I mean? I could have made it a little bit more of a, you know, uh, uh, a, a differentiation. But instead, eh, outline. <laughs> I know that. I know that it's. Uh, um, it's it's simply uh, uh, something that that happens, but the more that we, I think, engage with this as a as a practice, <laughs> the 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 better you'll get at it. I know I know I'm improving. You know what I mean? But this is a thing you'll I think you always can get better at. You can always work on this. Um, yeah. Other other thoughts, other takes on this. Yeah, no, that stuff is, that's huge. I'm looking at a rose right now, and it's just like, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it, it definitely puts the rose in a different perspective, for sure. Well, I think, um, I think too, like, seeing it for, uh, like, a local value, right? So what I mean is, like, the rose itself. And if you can sort of see it as like it's having a certain amount of, you know, even if it's in color, it's going to have a certain amount of value, right, as compared to other things. Um, and this is what is going to help you, I think, sort of achieve the, the you know, your, your ends here, right, is like planning on what's going to be darkest, right, planning where the, dark, the darkest areas are, right, the darkest sorts of objects. And then, of course, like being able to uh, 
I like this calibrate, you know, <laughs> being able to calibrate what is what is going to like define the differing edges from one another. And so some artists just work in just just black and they, you know, they're able to sort of control like the black ink and just gradate it out, you know, really beautifully. Others will use like the drop method, right? You'll have a, you know, cap of witch hazel or water or something and you'll add a certain amount of drops of of black ink to it. Um, and then this is another way to sort of control the value, but having, uh, having places where you have, you know, you have calibrated the range, right? Where you have sort of, you know, maybe in the background is darkest. So you have like the darkest darks to, you know, 75, let's say, let's say, you know, let's say that like zero is the lightest light and 100 is the darkest dark. And so, Maybe you have this 100 to 75 range in the, you know, in the background. In the foreground, maybe for the majority of it, it's like, you know, five to five to 40. You know what I mean? Something, some, something like that. And maybe there's touches, right, where you just, where you add just this very sharp note, very, very sort of deep value, and then you have this widest amount of contrast. Again, that helps you, I think add emphasis and then you know add a uh, visual interest because that that really captures the eye so much it's like looking for you know looking for that what is the contrast in there what is it going on that you know something is indicating to me that this is the the point i'm supposed to look at because that's kind of how our eyes work you know but yeah others i want to yeah i want to hear you guys I think this is brilliant. I have to sign off uh, for the day, um, but I would like to say that this, I like it. I like it. This is uh, this is definitely helping me because it's one of the things that I was wondering, you know, um, because you do kind of get confused with your light source, you know, but it it's almost like it's still, even though you have a light source, it still has to, you still have to obey edge differentiation. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like this takes priority over the light source. Well, I think that it's uh, um, they need to work. They they need to work together. Mm -hmm. They just they need to work together, and sort of like the light source will help you determine how much differentiation of edge you need to have. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like so I, you're yeah. right on point. I think as far as like you know that it, it's like. You have to have it, but then the light source, the light is what tells you what to do. So the light source is, mm. the, you know, is again, it's like if we had like absolute light, absolute dark, that's nothing, right? They're just mm -hmm. the same amount of nothingness, right? Like if you're blinded by light, you know, or you're sort of blinded by dark, it's still, there's nothing, but it's having the relationship. It's everything. It's where everything comes from. And so, um, mm -hmm. but I, I, you know, I hope that it's, again, I hope that like, uh, it just this, this doesn't solve stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, like, you know, we went over this and it's sort of like, and I'm like, I'm thinking like, yeah, there's so many deficiencies to what we were just talking about, but, um, but I know I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep working through it. I know that I will. I know that this is, you know, this is really something that's just, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna help put you where you want to be. I know it. it it's hel it, it helps me a lot, and it's something that I always, I'm always working on. Never be, mm -hmm. it'll never be perfect. But there's something nice about, like, being okay with that. Like, <laughs> it's, it's hard to do. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, you know, and that's the thing. Yeah. It's um. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. These little, these little things. It's like, oh, God. you know, and the next time we go over it, it we'll just be a little bit more informed. You know. Well, I so I hope that um, I'd love to see if anybody if anybody cares to. Next time we get together, if you want to, if anybody wants to show some of your your work and where you were working with edge differentiation. Um, could be a drawing, tattoo, whatever you want, painting, 
crochet piece, whatever you want. <laughs> um, uh, I'd love to talk about it more. Just sort of continue it. And, um, and so, yeah, this is, you know, my hope is to, uh, is to continue to organize this program. So it's, so it's interesting for you all. It's interesting for people to watch it. Um, and, uh, my, my, my sort of scheme is to, to try to like, you know, to try to cover fundamental topics, you know, sort of like cover them, you know, say once a month and then the next, the next week, right. We, you know, we'll do like maybe some life drawing the next week. Maybe we'll do a fun, you know, sort of simulated client exercise. And then I'm also hoping to have like, I'm hoping to like invite some, some guests on here to, to, to lecture and talk to us about stuff as well. Oh, yeah. as, what's that? That would be awesome. I, I, yeah, yes. there's, all of it. I would love, that would, love to all have of it would be awesome. There's, there's so many interesting people out there and I think they could, we could, you know, we could always, uh, you can always learn something new from, you know, from somebody. And so this is, uh, these are things I want to start doing. Of course, like I've really loved, um, talking about, uh, pictures with you all, right. So exploring art history and analyzing images and stuff. I think that's been, that's been really fun. Mm -hmm. so. Um, but yeah, spirit is saying he's got to sign off. It's, uh, it's Memorial day. We should all sign off. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I want to, uh, just sort of invite everybody, you know, back next week for another, uh, exciting episode. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. Uh, but if anybody has time to do their sign offs, please, you know, uh, we can start. You got, all right. So, um, Elise, could, could you give us your sign off, please? Yes, I am Elise Morrow. I am a 3D artist, and you can find me at Elise Morrow Visuals on Instagram and ArtStation, and you can find me at EliseMorrowVisuals.com. And I will be gone for the next couple of weeks, so you guys have fun. <laughs> yes. No, uh, enjoy your enjoy your vacation. Well-deserved. Um, enjoy New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, we're staying, like, a couple blocks from Bourbon Street. Nice. So we're, we're in the French Quarter. That's awesome. Yes, that's so cool. Yeah, I might be actually a couple weeks after that. I might be near you, Kyle. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to Tucson. Love... Oh, in Tucson? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll have to meet up. Say hi. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That's awesome. Oh, uh, that's cool. No, it's um, it's so weird getting to meet people <laughs> in real life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. You like you zoom with them all the time. Uh, it's and then you meet them in real life, so it's it's always it's so strange, but um, but I love it. That's great. Yes. Um, thank you, Elise, for coming. Enjoy your trip, um, and we'll see you again very soon. So awesome. See you again, and I do have to hop off. So bye, guys. Okay. All right. Bye. bye. Good week. Right. Amber, let's let's have your sign off. Okay, I am Amber Morgan. You can find me at Luxury Tattoos and Permanent Cosmetics in Egg Harbor City, New Jersey, on all social media sites under Amber Morgan. Again, it's a, it's so it's so nice to to catch up with you every week, and um, thank you for thank coming. You. you too. Yeah. Did you enjoy uh, our our topic today? Absolutely. I'm actually kind of learning that on fake skins at the shop at the moment. I have finally dove into roses. I hate roses excellent yeah i uh, so i'm doing a deep dive on it and um better than i thought i'd be on roses so i plan on sending you via instagram what i'm working on this week so you can show it for me next week awesome yeah no i would love to do I that what i'm working on is defining the edges of the rose petals without lines wonderful well i'm so glad that you know that this hopefully was timely for uh for that and um, um so yeah but i think it's it's something that you know uh you can always you know, look back on it and see like how you can improve next time that's all you know that's like that's the best we can really do you know what i mean because again well you know i think the more that you end up improving the more you see in in the work of others right it stops be you know it's like it's it's wonderful to be dazzled by stuff but again it's kind of like i think it's even 
it almost shows up much more. You love it when you can see something in it that's like, ah, a little critical, you know what I mean? But you still yeah. love it. You're like, ah, oh, I don't like, yeah, that's, that's an imperfection or something like that. And, and, uh, I'm I think also that learning how to use the drop method as opposed to just black. Cool. Cause yeah. in my first, my first apprenticeship with the old school biker guy, he taught me how to do black and gray with just black. Hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I think it'll, this will be a really good learning experience for sure. Mm -hmm. And, um, practice both ways. You know what I mean? Really? It's like, yeah, that's that what I'm doing. That way I ways. can figure out the transition between the two. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. No, Perfect. really. I so. really feel like the drop method will help me get even more realistic. Yeah, it, it will. I think it'll be really great. And, um, so again, I'm so glad that uh, that you had a good time and that it was uh, that hopefully it's helpful for you. And uh, I, can't wait. I can't wait to see your roses. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I think that's going to be it's going to be fantastic. So good luck with it, though, for sure. Thank you very much. Take your time and just sort of, you know, be focused and it's going to you know, you're going to you're going to kill it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Kyle, so so great for you to come today. Uh, Everybody was on time. Like <laughs> everybody <laughs> ended up being on time today. It was me. I was late. So I'm again so glad you could come and um, uh, and your insights here. I think were 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 also very valuable because I you know that was something that like I wasn't even thinking about at all. Um, so yes, thank you, dude. Seriously, uh, yeah. give us your sign off. We'd love to know where we could find you. Um, my name is Kyle Olson. I tattoo out of Tucson, Arizona, in a shop called Trinity Art Collective. Um, you can get a hold of me via the website, trinityartcollective.com, or you can get a hold of me on Instagram at Olson underscore tattoos, O-L-S-O-N. And yeah, I'm going to definitely mess with this edge differential because like the whole, uh, you know, you take your, your rose reference, your realistic rose. And then like, if you want to put leaves around it, like I've always just put like where I thought they were like most aesthetically pleasing, but I never took into account how the leaves are interacting with the edge of the rose. So uh, I'm, I'm going to do that this week and have fun with that. So I'm excited. That's such a really great insight. Like you could you could totally put a leaf as a darker shape, like in front of a lighter part of the rose or something like that. I You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think that that's exactly the kind of thing that like um, I need to think about more. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I people people come in with they want roses all the time mm -hmm. you know people want like beautiful flowers all the time and it's kind of like uh, uh I mean you could make it all colorful but even still like it's going to be more powerful if you're thinking about it like in terms of the value in terms mm -hmm. of like how it's going to have you know edge differentiation overall tonal value and that sort of thing and these are uh I think these are sort of timeless things that are always going to help you out, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's flowers or any other subject too. So, um, mm -hmm. um, I'm so glad that you, uh, are also like, you know, hyped about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just so like, cool, man. Seriously. There's, yeah. There's, there's just little things I didn't think about, like, say like on the outer edge of like the rose, like it's super light. And so you got to put a dark leaf there. Does yeah. that create like a higher contrast point to where it takes away from like the center of the flower is supposed to be the focal point? So it's just like, <laughs> like it totally might. It, it, yeah. doesn't, it, it doesn't fit as a formula. It doesn't, it can't fit all the time. No. So there might be just this moment where it works. And then of course it's like, you know, maybe, maybe you end up sort of like, you know, darkening slightly, you know, you add a little bit of edge to that, that uppermost part, right. Especially mm -hmm. if it's just, just on skin. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just line. It's light, light on light. Maybe there's just a little bit of tone that you put and it helps to sort of, again, mm -hmm. just give us just that little bit of differentiation without having to go in and doing like all kinds of background and stuff in the back. Um, sometimes you can't, sometimes you don't have that to rely on. Mm -hmm. So no. um, anyway, there's, uh, there's so much to it. And again, it's not a formula. It's, uh, you know, their principles. Yeah. And I think that's how, if we can think of them that way, we can, we can really get a lot out of it. Something mm -hmm. just a way to organize things. And so. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. The basics go constantly going over the basics is freaking huge. 
yeah man it's, <laughs> it's painful <laughs> it's painful but i think that's uh that's how you grow right it's uh growing yeah. is growing as pain mm-hmm. so, um but anyway it's uh, again it's been a pleasure getting to you know getting to have you today and then uh, hopefully see you tonight at class um 100 the subscribers exclusive drawing group everybody so if you're still if you're still watching you should definitely like and subscribe to reinventing and then of course you should join up uh mm-hmm. join up for the you know for the drawing groups um they really are i mean i think that's a, a it's really been a blessing in my life to have mm-hmm. just being honest like it's just they're it's, it's affordable um this isn't meant to be a commercial but it's affordable and it's invaluable mm-hmm. this is thing you know where you get together with others who are also passionate mm-hmm. also you know you give a shit sometimes mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's difficult you know what i mean it's difficult to find the community and sometimes it's difficult to find people that are open-minded to receive criticism receive mm-hmm. feedback mm-hmm. and to you know to work on something that's not like you know you just have to do it but mm-hmm. anyways um well, I'm going to sign off. My name is James Wisdom. This has been Drawing for Tattooers. You can find me at Tattooing Wisdom, tattooingwisdom.com. Um, happy drawing, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next stream.